Hey everyone, in today's video I want to show you how you can set up your IPTC metadata in Photo Mechanic 6. If you're new to Photo Mechanic 6, before we get started on this, it might be an idea just to jump over into my video where I introduce what Photo Mechanic is, how it came into existence and what it is used for. It also tells you a little bit about how to set up your initial preferences when you use it for the first time. I've linked to that video here, or you can hop over onto my channel, which should have a photo mechanic playlist with all of my photo mechanic videos and tutorials on for when you want to work through them. If you're here for the IPTC data, well, let's jump right in. If you've not previously heard of IPTC metadata, or perhaps you've just not needed to use it until this point, then you'd be forgiven for not knowing what it is. Thankfully, it's pretty simple to understand in my opinion, once it's been explained to you, or you've seen it in practical usage terms. Firstly, IPTC stands for International Press Telecommunications Council. And so when we talk about IPTC metadata, well, that's an archival standard that is followed by photographers around the world. Okay, to put that in plain English, it basically means when we use IPTC metadata, we're gonna be adding the same type of information into the same fields that other photographers, news organizations, and archivists are doing around the world. Therefore, it is uniformed, it is standardized, and it just makes everyone's life a lot easier. The screen you can see here is just, I've just opened up Photo Mechanic and got the um, empty com contact sheet on my screen. For more information about contact sheets, etc., go and have a um, listen to my, or a watch, sorry, of my first video in this series. Go to my channel, go to Photo Mechanic playlist, and it should be video number one, the introduction to Photo Mechanic and setting your preferences. So the two places to add the data. Firstly, you can go into file and ingest. And this dialog will open up. Now, if depending on how you've set those preferences up I've just spoke about, you could, when you have a memory card inserted, this ingest box, if Photo Mechanic is open, this ingest box could automatically appear for you like that. And there's all sorts of information on here I'm not going to get into because it's not relevant for this tutorial in terms of your, your disks and your folders, etc. But what I am going to look at is this IPTC metadata template on the right hand side here. And they've done the right thing by just saying metadata template. Um, so I don't have to say IPTC every two minutes because it's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, so yeah, click this metadata template button. And what that's going to do, it's going to load up the standardized set of fields that I've just been speaking about uh, and that you can populate for your image. They're all going to be laid out here. And you can see there are loads of them. Now, good news is I don't think you're going to have to always populate all of them uh, it's just a way you can um, define as much information as possible within your image but you might not want to or be able to always use all of them so what i'm going to do i'm going to um, go through the main fields in here and give you a little bit of background to them where you can find out some of the codes and that you, you need to add in a uniform way before I do that, let me quickly quickly just show you the other way of getting to this screen as well. So I said there was two ways, so we'll close that and close that. Uh, you can also, just when you're on the contact sheet, go up to image and metadata template from there, and that'll load exactly the same screen up. Okay, so when you do it through ingest, what you're essentially doing is you're telling Photo Mechanic to apply that IPTC metadata to the images you're about to ingest. When you go to it through here, uh, this just allows you to set it up um, without having to ingest any images. So really simple way of working. If you want to add information to any of these areas, you can tick this little box next to it and it's just free typing into here. Now I'm going to try and be as helpful as possible and quickly explain a description. And I, I said earlier on about you need to include as much information as possible. So I'm going to use a soccer example again, a football example, sorry. Um, but apply this for your sport and it'll make sense still, I promise you. So I always start with an X. Why is that you add, you may ask? And that is because when you're at an event, you want to be able to do as minimal uh, or as little amount of work on your laptop as possible. You want to keep your head on the game and not in your in your laptop. So 
by putting X in and then writing the rest of the description, it basically means when we're at the match, if your stationary pad is already set up with the basic info, which I'll write in a minute, then when you're live at the event, all you need to do is pop back in here and add what is going on. So to make that make a little bit more sense, X during the, and then we write what information about the match is not going to change. So the English Premier League match between, uh, let's pick two teams, let's go Liverpool and Manchester United. At Anfield, bracket, uh, comma, Liverpool. Um, and then let's pretend you also want that in the caption, as in your credit. So straight away, let's say this is the morning of the game and I'm off to shoot that this evening or this afternoon. That information I've just added there is not going to change, right? While you're at that game, none of that will change. It could be a 10 all draw, three players sent off, and goodness knows what else, it'll still be the Premier League match between Liverpool and Man United at Anfield. So you've already done some of your work for the game there. The idea being, when you're at the game, let's say we have a photo of Marcus Rashford scoring, you'd literally come in here and you'd then type Marcus Rashford scores Manchester United's first goal, and then during the English Premier League, the rest of it makes sense, right? So all you're adding is the context of who is in the image and what is happening in the image, so the description and the caption of what's happening. Now, as you just saw, while it only took maybe 10 seconds or so for me to write Marcus Rashford scores Man United's first goal, it is still too long because as a professional photographer, you could be wiring 20 images from a match, you could be wiring 50 or 100 or whatever event you're covering. So if you've heard of code replacements, this is when you'd use those. Um, and you'd set them up differently. I'm not going to cover code replacements in this video because, um, firstly, it's, I think it's more beneficial to keep it separate, not to muddy the waters with what IPTC metadata is. Code replacements is a great bit of functionality within Photo Mechanic that shortens down the process of adding your captions in. Uh, so we'll, we'll look at that in a separate video. If you go to my channel page and go to the Photo Mechanic playlist, it will be on there. I've also got a really old one already on there, I think from um, probably about four years ago, if you want to revert back to that one. So description or caption, that is what's happening in the image and basically that headline stuff, what you might see in a caption in a newspaper, for example. Description writers, I'd usually just tick this and put my own initials in there. And then headline will probably be, I'd probably just say the match, to be honest. So Liverpool versus Manchester United. Keywords, so again, this could be Liverpool, United, you could put some players in here if you want, you could put competition in there, whatever you think is relevant, just separate them with a comma. Uh, this, these boxes are the, the four boxes I've done so far, or the data fields, sorry, <laughs> underplaying it saying boxes, but the four data fields I've populated so far are all free text, you can just freely type in there, there are no restrictions, uh, there is no standardised uh, input method if you like for those just another little tip from myself on the keywords basically think of the keywords as what people are going to use to search for your photo be it on the front end of an agency website if you work for uh, example is if you go to getty images and go to their editorial section you can type in anything to find a photo so a keyword that is stored within the iptc data should return in those searches so i, I always think of keywords in the same way as I would with like um, optimizing a YouTube video where you're trying to tell them, trying to think of words and phrases that could be searched upon or, or trying to direct what that photo is about. Persons shown is another box you can just type in. Uh, so let me put Marcus Rashford. I'm not going to go populating all of these. Featured organization name and organization code. In the IPTC scene, there are codes for these. So if you head over to the IPTC uh, website, I will drop this link in the description as well. So the IPTC photo metadata standard, latest version is 2019.1. And if we just do a quick search for scene, and you see right there, 6.19 scene code. Uh, and what this is, is basically gives you 
a load of digits for the new scene codes. So you can see things such as headshot, full length, profile, group, general view, panoramic. So if you want to, you can use these. If you're going to add anything in there, you can use these codes to do so. And you should use these codes. So in this IPTC scene, you click that and then look up the six digit code from the IPTC standard and drop that in. Okay, next section is image rights, and this is all the information about you as the photographer and the usage terms of the image. So I'll put my, my name in there. Job titles, if you're like a freelancer for an agency, for example, this would be Stringer. Copyright, so who, who owns the copyright to the photo? So again, I'm gonna go Richard all forward slash tolerue.com, my website. Credit is exactly the same. That's what I want to be credited with if this image is bought or used. The source the source will be, again, it's a free text box. This would be like if there's a middleman in the process of selling your image. So if you shoot for an agency, you'd still be the creator or photographer, but the agency will be the source because they are the one handling that photo and, and selling it on, if you like. Copyright URL. If it's your own images, pop your own image URL in here. And then rights usage term is a really important field. I'd argue it's one of the most important on here because what you're going to do is you're going to basically say what this image can and can't be used for. Now, in the case of if you're photographing Premier League football, for example, and I'm going to guess it's the same if you're shooting NFL or NBA or something, you're going to have a, a load of usage terms such as editorial use only, no commercial use, no use with any audio, no use in video, etc., etc. So all those usage terms will go in here. And the first thing I always write, so it's a free free text box, the first thing I'll always add in here is in capitals. The first usage rule or usage term is no unpaid usage. And then you may add any other information in there as well. If you've got any publications you don't want to use your photo, really important to make that clear in the usage term so if there's a particular newspaper or uh, outlet that you don't want your photo to appear in for whatever reason maybe you've had a bad working relationship with them they've been embroiled in some controversy you don't agree with or whatever that goes in the usage terms and i'll probably make that quite clear maybe use an asterisk and say asterisk asterisk and say the daily i don't know i'm going to say news because i don't want to offend any real news organizations um you might want to put the daily news excluded, and that is the if, if that publication exists, that is the instruction. So I was using these images that do not sell it or do not use it in the daily news. Next up is status. So any special instructions from the images? Any you can where it's got category and support a category here. Again, the IPTC website has a load of codes that reflect categories for images. So this is not something you should be adding free text to instead there are codes you can lift from there and paste in i think there's one page that um, goes on forever and ever when you scroll over on the the iptc standard site and it gives all the different category codes there's i, I want to say hundreds of them there's probably more than that contact info so this is you as the photographer so put your own address in here uh contact city state zip country so all that information obviously if you're in the uk the zip is going to be your postcode Contact email or emails, put your email in here. Contact phone number, all quite self-explanatory. So that is free type content. Media, image dimensions, I've never filled this data in. And then image preferences, same here. You can add ratings and, and different things, color classes in here if you need to do so. Again, I never have. And then back up to the top, event and location, this right-hand column is pretty important. So again, um, your event and your uh, ISO country code, IPTC subject code, all that type of information needs to be looked up from the IPTC website. So you're adding the correct codes in there just again to make sure that when you archive this image, it is uniform with what people shooting that same type of event, that same type of subject have used worldwide. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I think I said event is um, an IPTC code. Check that. I'm pretty sure event is probably just something you can type in yourself. These codes are definitely ones you will need to uh, look up to add. Locations taken and shown again, so you can add GPS location 
data in here. It can be carried across from your camera or you can add it yourself. And then again, there's a model release and, or not release, sorry, but model release ID, model status, model ages, etc. Now, so if you're doing a photo shoot with models, you can add that data into here as well. And where that's important, if you do off your own back, um, maybe a photo shoot for, uh, i trying to think of a good example, maybe some casual wear, some clothes, not, not label specific, but just some cool sports related photography or maybe a product lineup or something like that. And you drop them onto uh, a website, then whoever picks them up with a view to use them is going to want to see the model information in there to make sure they are commercially allowed to go ahead and use that image without having to pay a model or yourself or do any additional work. So that is really important if you are selling images with models in. Licensing goes in here. So we have information about image creators and copywriters if it's to do with licensing that image and also image supplier ID, image supplier uh, name, etc. Sorry, mind block there. And that is about it. There is more more detail you can go in on a couple of those sections. I have glossed over them, but it, it should give you an idea of the breadth of content within here. It is very much worth, if you get to a box and you can't remember what it is, hop over to the IPTC website here. So it is IPTC.org. And if you scroll down, you'll see the standard. There's also information about what is metadata if you need to remember. Um, and this, this image is actually really good because it kind of shows you, I said before, this data is hidden in an image file. Well, that's kind of what it is. So digital photo pixels are the first layer of an image file. All the captions, dates, rights, licensing, etc., are kind of hidden data within that file, but kind of underneath the surface. And then in terms of the IPTC standard, you can go here, read all about it. There's a ton of information, much more detail than I've gone into. Okay, so just before we finish off, I just want to show you how you can, if you've got photos you've already ingested, or once you've ingested and applied that initial uh, metadata to the image, how you can go in and just fill out that first uh, specific description, or first part of the description that is specific to that image. Uh, so if we click on this, if you look when you've got your contact sheet open, click on the I button, and what that's going to do is it's going to load that metadata. And you can see for this particular event, and shot for an agency, the description is already written, and there's the X at the start. So all I need to do here is, uh, I think that was Danny Lloyd of Trammy Rovers, so I'd write, so Danny Lloyd of Trammy Rovers crosses the ball during the AFL trophy. And what you really should do is best practice, because don't forget, that Sunderland defender, whoever that guy is in red and white there trying to block the cross, he might become the story in this game, or he might become the story a week later or a year later. So when it says Danny Lloyd crosses the ball, what we need to add as well is under pressure from, and then the name of the defender in there like that. Okay, so that's it. That's how you add it on a photo per photo basis. Any questions, pop them in the description below. Sorry this video is really long. I wanted to... Make sure I covered enough detail on it. Uh, yeah, next video in this series, it will be on code replacements. And that is hopefully going to be a much shorter video. And you'll see how to shorten this process down once your uh, initial IPTC stationary pad is set up. How we can really shorten this uh, captioning process down.